On today's episode, you're going to be hearing from a New York Supreme Court justice. She is one of a kind, and I feel like any intro I would do would not be able to encapsulate who she is. Although her resume is impressive, her title is impressive, her position is impressive, the way she can walk into a room and light it up is like no other. She's going to be sharing how she went from a shy little girl in Puerto Rico, hoping to become a flight attendant, to making it through college not knowing English, to falling in love with law and her windy road all the way to the bench. She's going to be sharing how to build that confidence that it took to keep moving forward one step at a time. She's going to be sharing how she overcame fear and how she had to stay mentally strong. She's going to be able to help you today from wherever you're at right now and wherever you want to go. She will give you tools to absolutely get there. Please welcome to the show, Judge Evelyn Laporte. Welcome to the show, Judge Laporte. I'm so excited to have you here and thank you for dealing with all the technical difficulties to get you here. Thank you so much, Autumn. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here spending this afternoon or this evening with you. So when I met you a few weeks ago, I thought, oh my gosh, this woman is living her life alive. But not only is that important to be on the show, but you help other people do the same thing with your experience, your story, your journey. And as we were talking, you were sharing everything from childhood stories to, you know, climbing what you had to do to become a judge and then like what's next for you. So I'm so excited to dive in, but you shared a story about looking at a magazine when you were a little girl. So can you just give us a little background about your age, where you were in the world and kind of like bring us back to that little girl who that, who, who you were and your dreams at that time? Absolutely. My mom was a domestic um, woman working for rich people, cleaning houses and cooking for them. And after they discarded the magazines, she will bring them home. And I will look through these magazines and I was attracted to these um, ads and pages and commercials about the airlines advertising, um, you know, people to get uh, and use their airlines. And I used to see these the stewardess back then they used to call it stewardess now they are yes. flight attendants and I fell in love with the uniforms and the colors they used to wear gloves and hats and they look so gorgeous and I said to myself after looking and looking after you know all these pictures I said to myself I'm gonna be one of those I'm gonna be one of them and I want to be a flight attendant and I came to New York for that purpose after it. I completed one year of college for that reason and at that purpose uh, to be a flight attendant. That's such an amazing story. So from that little girl that just told yourself, like, this is what I'm going to do. Was it just your voice that you've heard throughout the years or who really inspired you to believe in yourself to think that you could do whatever you wanted to do? My father. And I still hear that soft, sweet voice Aww. of my dad that used to tell him, and let me tell you, Autumn, I come from a very humble beginnings background. My mom was a domestic uh, woman cleaning, as I said before. My father mm -hmm. was a sugar cane worker all his life. I grew up without a TV, without a telephone, without mm -hmm. a refrigerator, came to my life later on. Part of the electricity came back to my life later on mm -hmm. as a young adult. And I did not grow up with a lot of things, technologies, and a lot of things that we take, uh, uh, that we yeah. enjoy today. But my father always told me if, in order for you to get out of this life and do better, mm -hmm. you have to go to school and educate yourself and do better so you could get a good job later on and support yourself and have a better life. 
my father's vision of a better life was and a better job was becoming a teacher. At that time, teacher yeah. and nurses. That's what I love teachers and nurses so much because they work so hard and I have a lot of respect for yes. them. But my mind was on the magazines picture, uh, pictures oh, and I wanted to be a flight attendant. Don't get me wrong. I, at one point, I thought about, yes, becoming a teacher, but I wanted it to be a flight attendant instead. Well, and back then, I had this conversation with a young 20-year-old today. Back then, you know, women were thought it would be great if you could be a secretary, a nurse, a teacher. Yes. And so those are really are, you know, we're choices. And now it's like endless choices. I think so many choices that people have a harder time deciding. So as your dad's voice stayed in your head and still here today that you could do it, obviously you never saw yourself as a judge, not until not, not that long ago. So from attorney to judge, I know you shared the story about the process becoming a judge, but what did it take for you from that little girl that had to tell herself how did you implement that same thing from being an attorney to all of a sudden making the decision to go for it? How did that voice play out? And did you just tell yourself you're going to do it or did you just try and hope for the best? Or how did that happen internally for you? Well, I never had the opportunity to have a mentor or a coach mm -hmm. or a, a someone that could tell me, guide me and take me by the hand. It was, as I said before, my father's voice because he wanted it to do better. And um, don't get me wrong. I'm very proud of where I come from, yes. but it's always room for improvement. And uh, after the year and a half of college in Puerto Rico, then I decided to come to New York and fulfill my dream in becoming a flight attendant. But guess what? I went to interviews and I did not know English. So I think that I wasn't hired because of my in lack of English language or skills. Then I decided to return to school back, it was college, in order for me to learn English so I could fulfill my dream of becoming a flight attendant. But it took me a long time to learn the English language. And in the meantime, uh, while in college, I came across classes that interest me and um, guide me and let me into the field of law. And at one point, attending while attending college, I decided I don't know where it came from. I cannot explain, but I was interested in it. And I decided that I was going to become a lawyer and put the idea of being a flight attendant in the back of my head. I said, I could always be a flight attendant. I'll come back right. to it later. <laughs> but let me go to law school. And let me tell you, it was very hard because I was still dealing with the English language. My English wasn't that great. I was I was hardly really speaking because um it takes time and I was yes. only speaking English at in school in my home and uh, with my friends I was speaking mm -hmm. Spanish so it took me a long time and then going to law school is another type of language lingo that you have to learn but I just decided that I was going to do it. I didn't know about motivation. I didn't know about self-esteem, low esteem. I didn't know about confidence. I didn't know about none of those words, but I guess they were in me. I just didn't know about them. And I thought about my dad, get better, do better, go to school. That's how I ended up going to law school. And then after going to law school, which was another hardship and another set of, um, uh, um, uh, I will say, troubles in finishing law school, um, I was an attorney for 18, for 18 years in New York. And um, in 2004, I decided once again, heard my dad's voice, do better. And I went to become a judge and I apply. I went for it. It wasn't easy. No. Once again, but I did it. And you know what? Sometimes you have to take chances on them. You have to yes. go with your heart. You have to go with what your heart desires. 
and um, don't be afraid. Everything is a challenge, but you have to take chances and you'll see that once you do it, you'll see a light brighted at the end of the tunnel. And I love, I enjoy being a judge. I enjoy being an attorney. Um, my life has been with full of difficulties, but I am so happy and honored that I have been able to give the opportunity to become whatever I wanted in life. And you ask me, well, what's your next chapter? I'm going into public speaking, Autumn. I'm That's going right. To, this is not the end of me. This is, is going to be a transition. I'm about to retire and I'm looking forward to becoming a, um, a professional public speaker. But what I love is that your dad's voice that just says do better is not like just become successful, just make money. So no matter where you're at, you always just think I have to do better. Like you had never arrived and to overcome and learn the English language, instead of just seeing a dream and thinking, oh, well, that's not possible because I don't know the English language or because of whatever you said, okay, I'm going to go work on that. And then you'd hit another obstacle and you're like, I'm going to go work on that. And you could have been easy. Like, look at me, I'm an attorney, maybe someday a flight attendant, but I'm an attorney right now. And I'm doing amazing. And that's it. You have success. And that's good. And to say, you know what? I can do better, you know, called for more listening to yourself to say, to me, it's that inner whisper, whether it comes from yourself or the divine or to say you do more for me. There's the reason we're hearing that rather you want to call it intuition, or I call it the nudge to kind of nudge you. Like, why were you just, maybe you were content being a judge, but why, you know, with that little whisper, that thing that said, come on, come on, you can do it. You can become a judge. And then everyone just kept talking about it. And all of a sudden you see the signs everywhere. To me, that is because it is about you, but even more importantly, it's about the ripple effect. It's the, it's the impact that you had and have from that, from the bench that you, you never could have or seen before that, but you followed that. And it takes a lot to follow that. There's a lot of people that feel that, but just like you said, you you're scared and you still had to do that. So what is it when you're scared to do something that just kind of pushes you forward? Because a lot of people are feeling that, like I should do better. Maybe they're already successful, have the house, drive the cars, or maybe they're 20 years old flopping all over. Like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but what is it that makes you go for it? It's probably my desire to do, to um, go higher, to as I said before, to do better, to challenge myself. Yes. Sometimes we feel too comfortable where we are and we stay stuck in situations that we probably don't want to be in because we are afraid to the about the unknown. And fear is a feeling that is it's something that you do not see, but it's very strong. And sometimes you just have to tell yourself, nothing is going to stop me from accomplishing what I want, whatever it is, whether it's a, in a relationship that you're in, whether it is something that you want to do for your children with yourself, yes. learn how to cook, be a writer, uh, whatever it is that you want to do in your life, don't be afraid because once you get it done, once you make the first step, which is what I learned every time I completed yes. a step, and yes. life is all about choices and step. You do one thing and then comes next. And then you do one thing. Don't try to do everything at once. Just take it one step at a time and it will get you higher. So the reason why I decided to take all those steps, even though I was afraid, is because mm -hmm. fear wasn't going to stop me. That's and I right. have a lot of challenges in my life, no money to go to school, college or anything. I said, I have no money. The banks do. I have no, no one to tell me, go here and there. The internet wasn't, uh, wasn't available as it is today. So you have to do it either by trial and error, which is what I did, or you have a you have a mentor 
or a um, someone that could help you do it and then reduce uh, reduce the chances of you making mistake. I made a lot of mistakes. But you still kept going. Getting here. Exactly. And but I love that. What? That is such stop great me. advice. It's simple, but it's just a step, one step. And I think people become paralyzed because they know where they need to get. Like, I, I want to be a judge or I want to be an attorney or whatever it may be. But there's 50 steps. So they won't take the first one because they don't know about the seventh and the 14th. And, you know, they don't know. So it's like, you just have to make the steps and fail forward and be okay failing. And I think people have a really hard time failing. It's like, you're going to fail. And for you to do without a mentor, a coach, it's not like there's a book on how to become a judge today, you know, and, or the internet. It's not like you could hop on YouTube and how do I become a judge today? That you just took one step at a time and asked the next question, took one step at a time, asked the next question. And just like you said, made mistakes and look where you're at. And so what has been the biggest surprise to you about becoming a judge? The biggest surprise is that I was able to do it. Yes. I never remember, Autumn, I told you I came here with the dream of becoming a flight attendant. Yes. And there is a big difference between yes. a flight attendant and becoming a judge. And to become a judge, you have to fulfill certain credentials mm -hmm. before um, yes. in terms of that, at least in the state of New York, you have to pass the bar. And the New York bar is one of the hardest besides California in the country. I went through my troubles with the bar. Mm -hmm. autumn but it didn't stop me from taking and passing the bar then I became an attorney and as an attorney I I practiced family law lalotan and criminal law I practiced criminal law for a period of 12 years I was a prosecutor in Brooklyn DA's office handling cases of domestic violence family abuse and sex crime cases high profile cases in that office. And after 12 years, I decided that I could go higher than just staying as a lawyer. And I decided to go after the judgeship. Now, in order for me to get to becoming a judge, it was a process of me building confidence because I was very shy. I don't know. I'm going to tell you, I grew up as a very shy person. I will not speak, participate on anything in my school, in, 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 in church. Amazing. I, I was not a big speaker, not a big, uh, uh, I didn't participate in much of anything. I was behind the scene and building up uh, uh, confidence took me a while. And nobody told me and explained to me anything of this. As I said before, I had to go to the process in order to find out who I was, who I really are and what I was capable of. And I'm capable of doing so much. And there are so many people out there, Autumn, that I know they can do amazing things, but they dare to try. You got to try. Life is full of so much fun and so many good things. And I enjoy now being a judge, which I love. And I have I, I have learned a lot from in the process as being a judge. I'm a criminal court judge. I have learned how to help people that are in trouble. And I've been able to give people hopes, especially the younger generation, give people hopes, tell people that, yes, we make mistakes. Some mistakes are bigger than yes. others, but they could always be corrected. You could yes. always turn your life around. And I give people hope and they see this and they have become able to turn a lot of them, turn their life around. It's so and awesome that's to see what that. makes me so happy and yes. rewards my life yes. because I'm able to help others. I'm here to serve the people, to help people. That's what I enjoy more, most in life. So through all of this, obviously you've seen it all, you know, my background's in law enforcement too, but, you know, dealing with the public and 
at the pe- at people's worst time, you know, things that happen to people in their worst times or the worst part of their lives. How have you been able to take care of yourself, to keep going, to stay motivated, to just like really take care of your mental health? I have to stay positive. Mm-hmm. I have to stay positive in my own life, thinking that even though th- this negative situation and this bad situation is happening, there is always room to do better. I read a lot of motivational books that keeps Mm -hmm. me going. I am a very, um, uh, very faithful to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Uh, I read the Bible when I am down and when I am in my height, the Bible gives me a lot of support. I, I, try to speak to people about things that are positive. I stay around people that are positive. So all those things, and I look at life in a positive way. And I absolutely do. Yeah. Because you just walk in and you are such a light to the world. And I listened to this podcast yesterday about negativity and just, you know, it spreads like cancer. It gets in roots and it just feeds off of each other. And one person that can walk in the room that's positive, that's a light that says, you know what? I don't have time for that. Like, I, I don't think I could ever be negative around you because you're just like, you don't have time. You are on to bigger and better things. And, you know, it doesn't mean people don't have down times. I'm sure. There's been down times or dark times for you, but to be able to say, okay, what is it that keeps me lifted up? Because we have to do it for ourselves, but you are such a light in the world. And imagine being a light in your position versus not being a light in your position and the impact that has on other people. So thank you for sharing that. And the other thing that I'm so taken back by is that you're always willing to reinvent yourself to go to that higher level and you are getting ready to retire, which is so amazing. But tell us about reinventing yourself. Like when you've been working for so long for the state of New York and then what, like, does it feel weird to be kind of towards the end of that? Or what's that feeling like? Well, I have, I have mixed emotions at this point mm-hmm. and the closer it gets to my retirement, which will be by the end of this year, uh, the more emotional I get because this has been my life for so yes. many years, my judicial life, my friends, attorneys and um you know the the uh, the core staff that I have created a bond and a relationship with but they always be my friends they always yes. been in my life but I am ready to go to the next level I'm always looking for challenges and new things um, so now because remember I told you that I was a shy person. Yes. I want to tell the world that even though when you're shy, you could overcome your shyness. Yes. Even though you are uncertain, you could overcome that. You could overcome your fears and do better and become bigger and amazing. So I want to share my message with the world and give the world motivation, hope. And um, to let people know that it doesn't matter what you go through, you could still do well and come back out as a winner. It depends how much you want to invest and how far you want to go. So I'm going into public speaking. I'm very so excited exciting. about it. I can't wait to get into my next chapter. I don't know what else God has and the future has out there for me, but I'm ready, Autumn. I'm ready for whatever. It's just so great when you are obviously living your life alive, but instead of just staying in that place, you're so willing to give more of yourself, stretch yourself again, because it's stretching into another you know, arena that you're not you know, used to and, and really still have the opportunity to give not only your gifts, but just like you said, to give hope because it's so easy to just be comfortable, right? You could just start going on vacations and hang out and, you know, for you to have such a fire and such a passion for people still. And you're like, I'm just getting going. You're such an inspiration to, to me and so many people that are like reinventing yourself and, or have that fear or shy or think I'm not enough. We all have that, you know, voice in our head that I'm not enough or our confidence slips. And to say, you know what, if she did it, I can do it. And rather to hear your dad's voice, or maybe I have to borrow your confidence for a little bit or borrow your voice and just think, oh my gosh, look what she's doing in her life and look what she's overcome. And to really borrow that, that belief and borrow that confidence 
And that's okay. If I have to borrow it for a little bit or something to borrow, because that's, that's called being human is that we're supposed to be able to hold each other's hand and, or just from your words of your mouth, spreading that hope and giving that hand up to people. There are so many people out in the world waiting for you for that public speaking thing that I know you are just going to shower with love and hope and inspiration. And I think it's different with just when people just talk words, right? Just, oh, be that, do that, read this book. But when somebody's walked it, and not only have you walked it in the past, you continue to stretch yourself. You continue to push yourself instead of just saying, okay, I've arrived here and I'm done and I'm good. I'm going to go home. It just it shows you have such a heart for people and serving people. I just cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you so much for your support. And um, I'm looking forward to my new career. I'm just, I'm saying to people, I'm not retiring. I'm just transitioning to something right. else, which is what I'm doing right now. I don't think I will be able to retire with all this energy and all this, um, you know, um, care and love that I have for people to help people. And I know there are a lot of people out there that are in pain, that are insecure, yes. that they don't know what to do. They don't have a, um, they don't have anyone to go to and share what they are mm -hmm. going through. Um, I could do that. I could do that in a bigger platform so people can have hopes and can have as inspiration and be motivated to do better because yes, we can always do what we want to do as long as we are ready to do it. The sky, as we said, is the limit. That's awesome. And I feel like the people you're going to speak to, not only are you going to help people become super successful in their own lives or their own careers, but you're going to save lives just from spreading that hope of just having somebody that's been in a place of struggle or darkness or no confidence or shy or not seeing a way. And then just saying, look, you know, you can do it one step at a time, right? One step mm -hmm. at a time. And so leave us with one tool of how we can implement something to build confidence. Rather I'm shy, or I think I should be further along in life, or I'm you know, I, I have, I have not, maybe I've never had success in my life or I've not been modeled it, or I've, I don't have people that believe in me. What's one thing that I could implement to build that confidence in myself. You just said it on the, your last word, believe in yourself. That's the first thing people need to do. I didn't believe in myself for a long time and no believing in myself blocked my mind to see life in a different way in a different light. And because I was concerned about what people were saying and mm -hmm. thinking about me, I was not concentrated on my on my skills, on what I was able to do and accomplish. But once I began to believe in myself and I closed my eyes and my ears to all that negative information, yes. I started to accelerate and become come better than better than go to places. Even though Autumn at times I have to make hard decisions to kind of like shut down on a way people that are negative were negative in my life, including family members and mm -hmm. friends. Sometimes we have to do that for yes. a while um, and then come back to them later. I had to do that for a while while I was accomplishing what I wanted in life, because those voices could bring you right. down and could could cause you not to think that you're able to do it. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to tell yourself, yes, I can do it. And yes, I will do it because I have the strength and the energy and the will and the skills. And what you don't know, you learn. That's right. There's you can learn it. You can learn it anywhere right now. You can anywhere. learn Stanford, anything. Harvard has free classes. YouTube. Everybody. You know. You can learn anything. But I love what you said. Is that you turned off the outside, you know, negativity and noise, but you focused on what you could do, a skill. And I think that some people think, well, I don't have any skills. Well, if I look around to everybody else, I don't have I, I don't have skills that match up to everybody else. I don't have to because I'm not everybody else. I'm myself. And so my my best skill might be listening. It might be cleaning. It might be math. It might be speaking. It might, but I just have to focus on that one thing. And I think 
even more, I, I believe it's harder than ever because I mean, I literally can pick up this phone, scroll, and in about 30 seconds, I'm not feeling good about myself. And especially for the younger generations, they just don't, you know, it's how many likes did I get? How many people commented? You know, I wonder who likes me, who's talking bad about me. And it's like, just turn that off and focus on what you are good at because none of those people are paying your bills or paying for your college or those people are going to be long gone soon. And I don't need to compare myself to anybody because I'm, I'm just supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. Thank goodness. God made us all different. Right. So I can have an accountant and a dentist and a nurse. And I don't, I can't be like all those people. I I'm glad they have different skills than me, but I do need to focus my responsibilities, focusing on me and building my confidence so I can be the best to me. And that's just what you've done such a great job of, of, of absolutely building that con that self-confidence because it's, I don't think it's easy to do. And you just kept pushing and kept pushing and look where you're at. So such an exciting place for you to be and reinvent. So thank you so much for your time, judge. We just, I know you're very, very busy and you are such a light in the world to me and to so many other people. And I can just, I just see the ripple effects right now and everything, not only what you've done, but what you're going to be doing. So I just cannot wait. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for the invitation. I'm delighted. And so obviously judge doesn't have a lot of social media as far as following. I know I'm going to get messages like I want to follow you. I want to follow her, but she has a wait list for an email as she will start doing newsletters and speaking engagements. So if you want to be part of that wait list to get on her email list, um, I will put her email in the show notes. So you can just email her and say, please put me on the your email list. And as she retires, we can all celebrate her together and cannot wait to what's next. So watch for that email. And um, I am going to wrap this up by saying to a step at a time and always go bigger because you're just such a great example of that. Thank you, Autumn. And good night to your audience. I love to you and to all your yes, audience and listeners. You, thank you so much. Thank you, Judge.